Ah, oh, hello world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. Yeah, we're here live at the Build studio in New York City. Our next guest stars in the new action-packed series, Treadstone, uh, set in the universe of the Bourne franchise. This show explores the origin story and present-day actions of the infamous covert program. Dude, this show is crazy. I got a chance to see the first couple episodes. It's amazing. It premieres tonight on USA at 10, 9 Central. Here to tell us all about it, folks, the objectively handsome, the great Jeremy Irvine's in the building. How you feel about that, man? He's a beautiful dude. Bet, you see, they're wooing. So I bet you at home, you're wooing too. Uh, we're going to bring him out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a trailer for the show. So let's go ahead. Let's run that clip. Tell me about Treadstone. Treadstone? What is that? The ultimate weapon. They don't even know they've got these skills. They were cadre of sleeper agents deployed under normal cover lives with no memory of their training. These people are still out there, asleep. And someone's waking them up. Please don't make me do this. They won't kill you. I was confused at first. I finally know who I am. Told you it was crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. The great Jeremy Irvine right here. Do it up. Come on. Thank you very Let's much. Go. Thank you. Uh, wow, this show, man. Congratulations. It looks like it was a lot of hard work, but a lot of fun. I got a chance to see the first couple episodes. You're awesome in it. Everybody's awesome in it. Uh, super action-packed. Uh, how are you doing, man? Before we jump into this, how's Jeremy right I'm now? doing good. You I'm doing, doing good. Right? I'm a bit, yeah. bit of a flying visit to New York, but, uh, it's good. I mean, we only actually wrapped, uh, the the series like three weeks ago really? three so four you, weeks ago so it's it. been uh, yeah. yeah it's been it's been quick so it's uh, yeah i'm looking forward to tonight seeing myself on tv running around in my underwear <laughs> Uh, which is uh, most of the first episode, as you will know if you've seen it. Yeah, it is a lot of the first episode. Yeah, as I yeah. said back there, I'll say it again. Uh, you look, you look very cold. It yeah, like it, it, was, cold. it was, it was, it was, it was freezing. Uh, I mean, like, really, really cold. I was like, yeah, minus nine Celsius. So what, what do we say that was? I, I think was you like, said it was fourteen. Yeah, yeah. And so you're running around Fahrenheit at night. In America. I think people ask me, you know, what's the hardest thing about filming? And the answer is my nipples. When I was when I was running around, so uh, yeah, it was it was it was cold. <laughs> Sweet man, I'm looking I'm looking forward to talking to you all about that. You know, and getting into to making it and talking about the process and, and your nipples. But um, also, that's what I'm here to talk about, man. That's we can, what, and, here's the thing: every you know episode what? of Build, we talk about somebody's nipples. That is something we do is on that, this stage. Is that right? Okay, great. Because I've got other body parts we can talk about too. I mean, we can start there. This and we is can, the internet. We can uh, move up and down. I don't mind. Wild yeah. West out here. We can talk about whatever <laughs> part of this show you want to talk about Perfect. um Perfect. <laughs> before before we get into any of that tonight is the night it is a very exciting time you're on buses around new york city you're on the posters you're all over the place is that exciting for you is that embarrassing for you? how do you feel about that element when you've worked so hard on this thing here it comes but now you're all over the place um i mean it's uh, do you know i've been doing this for like 10 years now and it's still it's still just like a bit weird, you know. I mean, it's like the, the thing that I really enjoy is filming, and uh, I mean, I, I started off in theatre, and that was sort of what I thought as good as it was going to get. And then, uh, you know, I've been very lucky to do movies and TV now, and um, yeah, that's the bit I enjoy. The bit where it comes out is is always a bit odd. It's funny. The, the only thing you really care about is like, I like your friends gonna like it, and you know, and and usually my friends don't even watch it. I actually <laughs> sat down with um, my best mate Luke. Who, if you're watching this, um, and uh, I sort of said, you know, why, why don't we have a bit of a like a, a premiere at home? Like, because I, 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 I was like, I was like away for a year, so I didn't see any of my friends for like a year. And I come back and I'm like, hey guys, do you want to come over? I've got the first episode. Like, if you'd like to watch it, and they all came over, and they all drank like three bowls of wine, and. Eventually, I was like, okay, I'm, I'll put it on if you guys want. I put it on, and I turned around, and they're all just passed out. I mean, like, literally <laughs> asleep. They say, which is not a good advert for the show, and I, and I, 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 can, I can hear the producers of the show cringing it's about It's not the show. It's the three bottles of wine. The That's, show's great, yeah. all right? But the problem is my drunken friends. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. You, you're always sort of more worried about, yeah, the people that you know. It's, uh, I don't know. I try not to think about the fact that... For those hosting people. the Treadstone premiere parties tonight, limit yourself two bottles or less. Two the, bottles the three or less. three bottle cutoff. No more than two bottles out. of wine before no. you watch it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that third <laughs> bottle for the after party. Exactly. That's what you got to do. 
do. How did you how how did you get involved with this show, man? This is uh, so exciting. You were all over the world, as you said, filming. You worked on it for a year. But how well, did you come? Actually, to be I'll part stop of you there. Yeah. No, everyone else was all over the world, you, right? You, so everyone else, the entire rest of the cast, filmed in. God, they filmed in Hong Kong. You know, China. India, Africa, I think Taiwan, beaches in Mykonos, the jungles of like Colombia and stuff. Were you at least in Berlin? No, I you filmed, weren't even on location? I filmed in an abandoned hospital in Budapest for about 10 months. So, yeah, everyone else got to go to these really kind of glamorous locations and I had I had Budapest in the winter. Watching this, that's something, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm excited to hear you say that because something I was really like intrigued by is they're like, we filmed all over the world. And I was like, well, there's two timelines. And I was like, I wonder if he, do you, do you ever get to see anybody else from the others? No, you were for 10 months, you were, you had your, it was almost like a different show, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was quite, I mean, some, yeah, it's weird. I mean, for, for those who haven't seen it yet, I, my uh, storyline is in 1973 at the height of the Cold War. It's sort of like the origin story of uh, like the of the Jason Bourne yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, you know, how Treadstone, you're, Treadstone you're... started. Yeah. And then uh, the other sort of two or three storylines are set in, the, in modern day. Um, so, yeah, so when I was working, other people were having time off. And when I had time off, other people were working. So, uh, yeah, I kind of felt like I was sort of doing a movie with me and just like two other actors, <laughs> but it was cool. When you found out that you were gonna be the, like the original born, like they're gonna do the origin of that series, you're gonna be the first guy in that story, in that universe, is that, do you feel w with a franchise that large, with, with the other names that are associated with it, do you feel pressure going into that world? Were you excited to play in that sandbox? What was that like? Um, I think if, if it had been like, you're going to be playing the character of Jason Bourne, right. then absolutely. But what this is, is, you know, it's set in that world. And for hardcore fans of the Bourne movies, you'll see loads of references in there yeah. to where these some of the modern day characters were at the time of like the Jason Bourne films. Um, but if, you know, if not, then I don't know. It, it's, it's sort of, they're different characters. I'm not playing Jason Bourne himself. I'm no. playing, you know, a new character. Um, so, you know, that, that takes on the pressure off, but there's also, you know, there's a lot to live up to. Right. Sure. Um, but I can honestly say I've never worked on something as ambitious as, yeah. as this, you know, there's a, there's a reason that it took us a year to film 10 episodes. It's because yeah. we've basically filmed 10 feature films, like the standard and the budget on this was mind blowing. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've, I've been very lucky. I've worked on some really big budget films. I've I've never seen this, this sort of like scale yeah. before, and uh, you know we we would have four crews working at the same time, film crews working, yeah, some might be working in in India and Africa, and then a whole different unit just for all our action and stunts, a whole different director for all just the stunt stuff. Um, so yeah, it was pretty yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. You can see that in like every frame of the show, you it feels like you're watching a movie. Like it yeah, doesn't, it doesn't yeah. feel like a TV show. The scale, the story that they're telling, and then the the quality and like level of the action, like mm. the choreography, the the intensity of it, 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 it all just is at that level. It's at a cinematic level. Yeah, but well, well, we had the same producer as as the as the Bourne films, yeah. um, and so Ben Smith uh, said early on, he said, you know, I want this to be action. That, to a level that we have never seen on TV before. Um, and I do think now that I've seen the you know, first sort of five or six episodes that, that that's exactly what he's, he's managed to do. Yeah. What kind of time did you have, you know, it took a year to make this. How much of that year was you getting ready? Uh, I spent about, about two months training first. Yeah. Um, again, I, th I mean, you know, I can only really speak for myself here, but the thing that I loved about the Bourne films was that, you know, coming from the sort of James Bond generation of, uh, of watching sort of Pierce Brosnan in these sort of quite heightened yeah. films, then Bourne came along and kind of flipped that on his head and it sort of then was like seriously visceral and real and suddenly it was like super reality. And, uh, and so all the fight stuff, they wanted me to learn all the, fighting fight techniques for real first learn it you know actually hitting stuntmen with pads on and then and then take the pads away and learn how to do it on camera and make sure that every move that's there is something that is taught in martial arts is taught to special forces nowadays um and every fight was done live you know it wasn't done in front of green screens every fight was done live in front of camera um, so we had some. Did you have any martial arts experience coming into this? Like, did you have like a little bit from anything else? Or just in general? <laughs> no, right? no, this is no, all no, new. Closely, no. Oh And God. it's funny because when you do, once you've learned all that, and then you get into choreography, it becomes more like sort of learning a dance. And I'm such a horrible dancer. Um, I remember when I was doing uh, 
I got I, I did the second Mo Mia film, and uh, I got the first script through, and I was like, okay, I read it, and my character had loads of dancing to do, and I'm like, oh Jesus, and then. Uh, I went in for my dance audition, and the next draft of the script came out, and suddenly my character had no dancing. And it was like, there was all the dancing was gone. And, uh, and that sort of progressively, yeah, less and less dancing for my character as, as the new drafts came out. So. Were you like, oh, dodge the bullet there? Uh, 100%, yeah, yeah. So in this, it was, uh, it was cool. And it. Hey, but you know what? You <laughs> it's like learning a dance, but not to music, so it's fine. Like, I didn't have to be in time. It was, uh, it was cool. Didn't you play, so far, I'm just connected a bunch of random dots. Were, wasn't your character the young Pierce Brosnan in, in Mamma Mia? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, young Pierce. That's a weird little connection to the Bond world, isn't saw, it? I just saw a photo of him outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, young Pierce, and I've also done young Colin Firth before in another movie called The Railway Man. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought that I was going to, you know, if I was going to audition for anything in that film, it would be young Colin again. But, uh, no, young Pierce. <laughs> What, is there another, is there another young uh, uh, sta uh, elder statesman of Hollywood that you'd want to play? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, hey, man, if they all get to be as cool as those two, then... No, exactly, right. I'm good. just thinking... I know, I know. The, but there's going to be a horrible, horrible moment when I go out for a job and they're like, we're casting the young you, and I'm going to be like, jeez, now, now I'm getting old. <laughs> I think you've got time. I don't yeah. think you're, you're approaching that uh, at all. All right, so let's go back to the fighting thing. So you're doing the choreography. It's like learning a dance and all that stuff. What, was it intimidating? Having none of that experience, like martial arts experience prior to this, and yeah. now you're coming in with all these the, the stunt crew and all these other people that you got to fight with. Were, were, were you nervous at all? Was it intimidating? Was it scary? Was it help you elevate your game? What's what's it like going into that scenario? Um, I mean, I, I just really enjoyed it, to be honest. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was, like, particularly intimidating. I mean, it's, it's just great fun. I mean, it's kind of what, you know, it's exactly what I used to do when I was, like, eight years old in my garden after seeing, like, an action movie. I'd go out and pretend that that's what I was doing. And now here I am getting to do it, you know, Sem semi for real in a movie, um, so it's great. I mean, not every kid wants to run around with a gun, pretending to be a spy, kicking ass. So. Was there a moment where they were like, "We're going to have you jump off this thing into this pile or whatever"? Like, was there a moment that you were like, "That's a lot. I'm going to do it. I'm excited." There was, that there was one. There was one big jump off a building thing, which we shot in a studio, and I did say to the director, "I said we're doing this once." I was like, <laughs> "I'm not. Let's not. Let's not chance our luck too often on this one." It was. It was. Because, you know, he was our stunt director, Buster Reeves, is kind of, you'd know him from every cool, like, action movie. Like, he's the guy doing the crazy stunts. He's the guy who's, like, you know, Bane in the Batman movies and then does all the, the cool Batman stunts as well. So uh, I think he's like, hey, man, it's nothing to, like, jump off a 15-foot, like, wall and drop and roll and run off again. And there's me going, actually, for us mortals, that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of scary. <laughs> 15 feet doesn't sound like a lot until you're standing on top of that wall. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. a lot higher than it yeah. sounds. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. But we had some wild injuries. I mean, uh, we really were pushing what was yeah. what was possible without CGI. Yeah, yeah. So we did have a few, uh, yeah, a few stunt guys had uh, had some close calls, and and yeah, I think I knocked a poor guy called Martin's tooth out at one point. But um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was cool. It's intense. When you were watching it playback, and you because you said you've seen the first couple episodes as well, mm. uh, were you surprised at, at how it reads and how intense it comes across, or does it? Um, you look at it and go, "It felt harder than that," or what did you think when you saw it, like in, in honest for the first time? Well, what's kind of cool is because I wasn't, I was only on set for my bits. You know, I, 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 I quite a big chunk of this I haven't seen, um, so that was that was that was really great. I could sort of actually watch it. I hate watching myself. I feel sort of physically sick. So uh, yeah. I try to try to not do that so much. But with this, it's kind of cool. I can kind of actually enjoy quite a large part of it. Um, but I was watching playback quite a lot. I don't normally watch playback on the monitors when when I film, but. Um, because so much was action and so much was like physical stuff, like you want to make sure you're getting it right. So I did. I had sort of seen quite a lot, especially with the action stuff while we we're filming it. And uh, you know, it's we shot it in normally with action, you shoot it in tiny little bits. Right. And this, we shot whole fights in like one take and stuff, and then it all gets cut up. So I'd I'd actually seen quite a lot of it already. Yeah. And those sequences, people don't. It, it takes forever to, to film just one of those quick sequences. It'll play back in ten minutes, but that'll take you how how many days? How long you think if you had a ball? Um, like that opening sequence, uh, just watching you escape. How long did it take for you guys to do that? The opening sequence. Well, there's a big fight. Uh, the big fight with me and uh, there's uh, a, a female character called Petra. Um, and actually, you know that because we had spent months learning that, doing it for real. Um, 
that took like a day. Like that was really? quick. But then there's all this stuff like running across rooftops in, in Budapest and that took that took a long time. Um and was freezing and I was naked. So yeah. Back to the I nipple. spent a lot of this show nude. You did you know, this a lot. Yeah. Amount, actually. And there was a hor- there was a moment when I walked into my show when I actually had to be like fully nude. And like so they they I don't know if you guys have ever worn a cock sock, but um <laughs> that's uh that's that's Who what had they cock do. on Build Bingo. Did you guys yeah, have yeah, cock yeah. on your board? I think it was. Yeah, that's one of the ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I hadn't. Somebody I just hadn't won until yeah. this point. Somebody just won. We'll get the prize um, after. Yeah. But that's uh, that's always an embarrassing moment because what the costume department do is they is they they go into your trailer before you come into work right. and they and they normally leave your costume out and obviously your costume. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know they hang up your they hang up your costume for your thing. But here they all all they're bringing is 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 cock socks. Yeah. So. I, and what they do is they bring in a selection and they go, they go, hi, Jeremy, just so you know, we've, um, we've left some, uh, some things in your trailer. Uh, we left a few different sizes. So, you know, you just choose what size you want to take. So now you have to go in and make this decision and you're like, well, I can either take the one that looks like the enormous grocery bag, like this enormous thing. Or I can, and they go down in like, you know, different sizes until you're at something that looks like a coin purse. And you have this, you have this debate where you go, well, I can take the enormous one and try and sell that off, but obviously it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of empty space in that. Like I don't I don't want it to look asking, like it's gonna it's just trouble. You're asking for trouble. I, I don't want it to look like a little chipolata in a in an enormous carrier bag, That's right? And at the same time you're like, oh I could take the little one and it'll look like really full. That'll look be great. But <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah, but then i they're also gonna know that I took the little one. Yeah, they'll have the other so, uh, so within context, they'll know what you took. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a it's a real debate that you have to have in the morning and go, uh, how are you gonna get around this? And in the end I decided to take the enormous one, stuff it with socks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why and you'll see this, a lot of the shots waste up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they don't exactly. they take Elvis yeah, in the yeah, 50s, know, they don't I'm, even I'm, show it. Yeah, I'm they, they don't even... something that looks like a space hop around between my legs. Yeah. <laughs> What you got to do is you got to take the one that you need and then grab the other ones around it and just toss those away. That, they'll exactly. never know where you landed on the spectrum. Yeah. And you also sort of wonder, who else has worn these? Yeah. You know, like, have any other, like, famous actors worn these? Like, is, am, I, am I getting, like, Tom Cruise's... You're sitting in the up? same chair that Pierce Brosnan <laughs> sat in right now. Who's yeah. worn those guys? Well, I know, exactly. I know. Just please, God, have they been washed. Yeah. <laughs> sure they have. They have to have a log of those sort of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be someone who's working union. Oh, it's their job to keep track of all that. This. Anyway. I don't know. But I will spend the rest of this interview here unless you want to go someplace. Oh, talking about yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the wild things that happen on sex scenes. It's, you now also have a, something called an intimacy director. This is a new thing post, obviously, the hashtag Me Too thing, which is actually great. But it means you have a, uh, a director who comes in to do, so, who come in for Just the for sex the scene. scene. Yeah, for like the sex scene. Can you imagine what kind of creep got into that job? Though (laughs) I I don't want to direct features. I just want to direct when they're most vulnerable and naked on set. That's the job I want. I'm going to be the sex scene director. Totally. And their job is obviously to come in and make it like less awkward and really comfortable. They do the the way they and the way they normally approach it is just with like so much confidence, but like overconfidence. So it's like. so brash and talking about you know so you're you're gonna put your hand there and then you know are you comfortable in touching your ass and you're like uh yeah yeah i'm okay with that like <laughs> yeah i'm already wearing this sock yeah exactly yeah 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 i can't be any more embarrassed than i am already i've just got to simulate sex with someone i've just met wearing a cock sock like there's no more embarrassed i can be but, dignity's yeah. out the window at this yeah. point which sorry is this sounds like i'm promoting a porno this is this is an action well movie. i haven't seen like past <laughs> episode five so i i can't really speak to where the show goes but i will say oh dear yeah uh, <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> no, there's yeah, there's not a lot of that uh, here necessarily, uh, or not I've seen. There's that. a couple. There's a couple. A couple. No, it's, yeah. It's mostly action. It's uh, mostly. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool action. The love but, scene's yeah. arguably their own form of action. That's an action scene in a way. Yeah, it's it's very a PG. It's, you know, yeah. it's USA Network. <laughs> for goodness sake, we're not a yeah. Well, <laughs> Cock socks and sex scenes aside, the show really is amazing. Thank you, you see, thank you. I feel like uh, we got off topic. We yeah, got a little thanks. bit, but that's fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. Uh, the the show itself is fantastic. You put a lot of hard work into it. You can see that. Uh, I'm really excited for you, man. I'm excited for the world to see this thing and, and appreciate all the stuff that you guys did. Thank you very uh, much. Before we get out of here, we do have a couple. We have at least two. I'm sure after that, there's probably more. Uh, but we've got some questions in the room. <laughs> we got at least two. Let's start the first one. You got a microphone? Come on down. What's up? Hi. Hi. I just wanted to know if you always like wanted to be an actor or if you had other things in plan and then it just happened. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I sort of, uh, well, when I was a 
teenager, I always wanted to go into the military. I was always um, very keen to do that. And then when I was, as soon as I was 17, uh, I went along to my local um, army recruitment center and uh, tried to join up. Um, but I'd also been diagnosed as being diabetic and uh, they told me that I would be non-deployable, which um, sort of put an end to, put an end to that. I sort of went, well, in that case, I need to go and find something else. So um, I thought, what else is really like tough and masculine? And I was like, I'll find the stage. So I became an actor instead, um, which was a bit of a U-turn. But um, yeah, I don't know if that was uh, sort of how I got into it. I was quite famously, you almost, right before War Horse had said that you're, you were going to go be a welder. I'm going to weld. Well, I, th that I think that, that story's been slightly exaggerated. My dad was teaching me how to weld. God. Um, I don't, I've always had very supportive parents about going into this stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, at the time, things were looking pretty bleak. I mean, I'd come out, I'd left drama school after like a year, and uh, yeah, the work the work was not exactly flowing in. I think uh, yeah, the highlight was playing a tree on stage, um, in like the background of a theatre show. So um, yeah, I was looking for looking for anything at that point. Do you? I know it was one. Of, it was like the big break. It was forever ago. It was like seven, eight years ago. But War Horse, you know, yeah, there's a Spielberg set. That's mm. huge. That's the dream. You had to be walking around eyes wide. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably to be honest. I'm probably only really appreciating just how just how lucky I was sort of now. I think at the time, you know, you, you've literally barely worked apart from doing stage work and suddenly, uh, you know, you get told you're leading a Spielberg film. And my m residing memory really is just stress. I mean, just like <laughs> enormous pressure to try and do a good job and not and not mess it up. So um, I'm sort of only really appreciating it yeah. now, weirdly. Like I enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. But it, my yeah, residing memory is going, oh, Christ. <laughs> you know? I mean, well, there's yeah. people that are, uh, I get to talk to a ton of people here, people that have been in the industry for years, and they talk about imposter syndrome of having done this job for decades and still feeling like one day I'm going to wake up and people are going to think, oh, they, they don't know what they're doing. What are they doing here? So yeah. I can't even imagine, the, there you are now, one of your, your first big gig, and it's with Spielberg, for crying out loud. Mm. That's got to be stressful in the back of your head. Like, do I? what am I doing here? This is Spielberg. It is, and also you have to, I think something that, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize is you can be in the biggest movie in the world that weekend, and then the next weekend, there's the next biggest movie, and then, then the weekend after that, there's another movie, and another movie, and another movie. You know, so much content gets made now. Um, so, you know, just because you've been in the biggest movie of that month does not mean that, uh, you know, that that means anything a year from, from then. No so, guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay, can I do one more? I'd love. Yeah, let's do one more question. Microphone, go for it. Hi there. Hi. Um, since this takes place in the Bourne universe, did you get to meet Matt Damon, and did he or any of the producers give you any advice on carrying on the Bourne legacy? Um, he lent me his cock sock. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no. Is he, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't I, I didn't meet Matt. Um, I don't think I've ever met Matt Damon. But... Um, no, but it was, but we had the same producers and sort of the same sort of creative team like that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the same standards. I think something, I think, you know, the, the, the film that I remember that Ben Smith sort of really talking about was like what the, the first movie and getting some of that sort of uh, original sort of rawness uh, into this, which I, which I feel like is we've achieved. So uh, yeah, if that answers your question. Uh, well, thanks, guys, for your questions and coming and hanging out with us and being an awesome audience. Uh, thank you, man, for coming. Thank you and so much. Down. I know you got a million things to do to talk about, and it means a lot. <laughs> Come hang out and talk about cocktails. I know, and that's hey. all I talked about. That's that's it. It. No, we talked about a lot. I feel like I've wasted it. Sorry. Good. No, we <laughs> covered a lot of ground. No one can accuse us of otherwise. Good. Uh, Treadstone, I'll remind the world. It's tonight, man. It's on USA Tonight. I want to say 10, 9 Central on USA yeah. Tonight. Catch the first episode. You're going to be hooked. Uh, it, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of action. It's a great story story it's a great job man it's a great show uh and you're right in a time where there's a ton of content being made this one's worth your time go ahead and give it a watch uh one more time everybody make a ridiculous amount of noise the great jeremy Irvine, right Thanks here so much thank you bye-bye